Don't you worship the Lord today? Hallelujah. Watching us now. And when it look as if we can win, wrap it in your arms and step in. Everything we need, you supply. You got this big control, and now we know that you. When our backs against the wall, and it looks as if it was over, you, you fade away. And we're standing here only because you made a way. You made. So now we looking back on where we come from because of you and nothing we've done to deserve your love and mercy. You 
shown, but your grace was strong to pick us up because you
Forgive us today our daily bread. Forgive us, Lord, as we forgive. So let your kingdom come and let your will be done. Right. 
Let's give them a great, big, awesome thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do y'all do y'all think y'all could travel? <laughs> Would you want to? That's the stupid question right there. Amen. Gentlemen, you may be seated. To God be all the glory. To God be all the glory. Do I have a microphone right here handy? Can I have a microphone that's handy real quick? He doesn't know I'm going to do this, but uh, I want him to come give just a quick testimony. And uh, Gary, come up here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> What's so special about this guy here is... I don't know if you know this or not, Gary, but we are about to conclude 32 years of full-time prison ministry. January, January will, January, uh, I will walk into my 33rd year. I've been delivered from pro football now almost 33 years. Hallelujah. Huh? Some, some just... Got the privilege of retiring, but I was so ate up with it that I had to be delivered from it. But anyhow, uh, a full 32 years ago, I walked into the prison for the very first time, Mike Barber Ministries, and this guy here was one of my original volunteers and been with me all these years. Jerry, I love you. I just want you to take a few minutes, whatever, and just testify how good God is, where he's brought you from, whatever you want to say. I don't, if you want to preach, you can preach, <laughs> all right? Amen. Here. Hello. There they are. My name is Gary Landers. My TDC number is 301452. I've been out of prison 36 years. You know, when I was locked up, I was just like y'all. Thanksgiving was coming, Christmas was coming, and I was missing my family. I had a son that was, he was five years old. His first day of school, I got, all I got was a picture. And I got to sit in my bunk, I was on Ramsey too. I got to sit in my bunk and look at that picture. You know, I was hurt because I left him all alone. I was a single dad, so I left him alone, left him with, his, with my sister. But you know, 
after my time was served, I walked out of prison January the 6th, 1982. But you know, I've got to enjoy the last 36 years with my son. I got to watch him grow up, play high school football. He won the state championship, his high school team, and then he went on to play college football for four years. And after that, he got to play arena football for eight years. I got to travel and sit up there as a proud dad. That's my boy. That's my boy. Today, I live in Shreveport, Louisiana. And my son lives, I have a duplex. I live downstairs and my son lives upstairs. And we work together every day. I have a plumbing company and he works one truck, I work another truck. And every morning we go to McDonald's and get breakfast. <laughs> my son's about this big and he's huge, but he comes up to me every morning and hugs my neck before I walk off to get in my uh. truck. And after I left, I had a daughter. She's 28 now, and she just had a baby three weeks ago, so I'm a new grandpa. Uh -huh. You know, I could, I could tell you a lifetime of memories in the last 36 years, but it would take forever. But my word today is, with holidays coming, don't look at it as this is a, a bad time. Look at it as I'm still here. I'm going to get out. They've got to open that gate someday and let you out. Some people have been here 15 years, 20 years, 25 years or longer. But at someday, they're going to open that gate. I'm living proof that they're going to open the gate. And you are too. And then you're going to look back like me, kneeling on my knees at Diagnostics Union and asking God to forgive me and to save me. I got to Ramsey, I, got, I, I went to church, and I got baptized on Ramsey, too. A lot of you are going to get baptized here today. Amen. Jailhouse Amen. religion is real. <laughs> you can carry it with you all the way out. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Put your hands in the air. Say this with me, Heavenly Father. Thank you once again for this awesome privilege. Once again, open up my eyes to see, my ears to hear, my heart to receive all that you have for me this morning. I will not interrupt in any way the person on either side of me or front or back of me. My eyes as Mike preaches, will be preaching to him. Totally focused. Because I see, I hear, and I receive my purpose for this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. And amen. It's been... As amazing week as this ministry has ever, ever, ever experienced. And I say that very humbly, and I'm very genuine about that when I say it. Thousands of services through the years, but this week has topped it all. And what's made it so rich is because you keep coming you don't just come out here, but you respect this platform. You've given it your respect. And God has done some great things this week. Has he not? Amen. <laughs> and one of the things that I can feel really great about, and I can say it and genuinely mean it, is that when we leave, I can really feel great about leaving because of the awesome, awesome chaplain program that you have here. 
Chaplain Barker, his staff, all the programs that are flooded into this beautiful chapel day after day. There's not a reason that every one of you can't continue to grow. Amen? Amen. Your leadership, your head warden trickled down through his staff. No staff has ever been so kind to us and so genuine about it. And so in Jesus' name, I thank you for the week. It's time for us after this to depart and head to the win unit where we'll have a great week, uh, weekend there as well. But I just want to say thanks to all of you on behalf of my awesome staff, my wife and I, my awesome staff, Thank you for making our week so amazingly special. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And I'm really excited because I finally got some of my G4s on the front row where you belong. Huh? That pumped me right there. Amen. Amen. Our theme, scripture that I've used since Monday evening goes back to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, and it says this again, don't let anyone think less of you because of your youth. The Apostle Paul is encouraging Timothy. He's young, and he's telling him, don't let anybody intimidate you because they may look at you as young. And fast forward to, to today. In Jesus' name, don't let anybody look down on you. You're special. You're God's creation. Amen? Amen? And it goes on in this scripture. It says this. Because be an example to all in what? What we say. How we live. The way we love in our faith and our purity. So you see, to grab a hold of this true identity that we've been talking about, we have to be sensitive, and it's got to mean something to us in how I talk now. See, change is not changed until it's changed. That's deep, isn't it? Now, I've never done drugs. <laughs> I've never drank in my life. But, oh, did my temper make up for all of that. And I didn't know anybody that could cuss better than I could cuss. But when I fell down on my knees at 2 a.m. in the morning, when I became a real man, I became a real man when I dropped to my knees not standing up on my feet. And when I said, God, I'm done with this, I'm done with this lie the devil has been talking to me about, about if you give your life to Jesus Christ, you can't play pro football no more because Christianity is for wimps. Football's a tough game. And if you give your life to Jesus, Mike, you're going to lose all your teammates and all your friends. And I literally ran from doing what's right on those two thoughts. But finally, I had enough. And I'm believing in Jesus' name that all of you here through the course of this awesome week that you have had enough. Enough of letting self rule. Enough of being influenced by your homeboys. And that you are finally willing to stand up, grab a hold of this true identity. I was made by the hands of my Lord and Savior. And all that I am is created by my Heavenly Father, not the devil. Enough is enough. To God be all the glory and all the honor. And at 2 a.m. in the morning, I came in from a party. 
People love me to be at the party because I created the laughter. And I fell down on my knees. And before I did that, I looked over there at that end table by my bed. And I looked at that Bible that had been sitting there for almost four years. Because it looked good sitting there. But I never opened it. I was angry at God. The hell with God, what had happened to me in my life at that time. And I did not walk inside of a church house for almost four solid years. But that morning, early in the morning, I walked into my bedroom to go to bed. And I looked over there and some, I don't know what, it grabbed me. And before I knew it, I picked it up. And it literally fell open to Matthew chapter 7. And my eyes went to, I think, like verse 13, I think it is. And it says this, in red, Jesus speaking. Enter through the narrow gate. And then I went on to read, broad is the gate that leads to destruction. But narrow is the gate. And only a few will enter it. uh, Enter it. That word "few" scared the hell out of me. You know, when you're crossing over the middle against the Pittsburgh Steelers, Jack Lambert, that's ugly. They can't put the fear in you. But that morning, it shook me. And at 2 a.m. in the morning, I fell down on on my knee and I said, Jesus, I'm done. I'm done pretending. I'm a very nice guy. I'm very, very popular. But Jesus, I've caught a lot of passes. Thanks to the ability that you blessed me with. But there's one pass I have failed to receive. But Lord, right now, I receive you into my heart as my Lord and as my Savior. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Guys, it was so real. I got up off my knees, tears in my eyes. And for the very first time, grabbing a hold as I start to develop this true identity where I didn't care anymore what my teammates said. If I lost their friendship, I lost them, realizing that wasn't really my friend in the first place. If it means that I had to give up football because I'm no longer tough, so be it. Now, One of those two things did happen. I lost a lot of acquaintances, a lot of the teammates. They didn't want to be around me anymore because I didn't cuss anymore. I completely got rid of that. Why? Because the Bible says I'm to be an example of what I say. I'm to be an example on how I live. I'm to be an example on how I love, respect people around me, not looking at the color of their skin. Living by faith, trying to live a life where people can see the faith that's in me because without faith it's impossible to please God. And to keep myself pure and holy. Hey, when you're single, an NFL football player, It attracts women. I said, hey, can't be doing that no more. I'm to be an example of purity. All this took place, and I'm so thankful for that. And because I made that decision, look at the privilege that I've got today. To God be all the glory.
in all the honor. And so, gentlemen, as we walk through this together real quickly, I want to burn into your heart. I told my, uh, my staff, my wife, and, and Yum's here this morning. We were just kind of talking. Is It is so burning into me. It might sound like I'm repeating some stuff, you know, maybe to my staff, the guys behind the cameras, but it don't matter. I am determined in the name of Jesus that you guys grab this. Don't you run off that coat, dude. Just saying. Give him a hand, huh? Yeah. Come here. Come here. More than that, give me a hug. I'm a hugger. Amen. I love it. Amen. And so, guys, I can be excited about, like I said, leaving because of your wonderful chaplain department here. They genuinely love God. They get it. It's not about a salary. So much for that salary. But they really get it, and they're hungry for programs and programs to build you up. But guys, in order to do that, see, revival is first personal. You've got to get revival in here, not for anybody else, not for your wife, not for your family, not for your homeboys. Revival is here. Revival is in me, not for my beautiful wife, not for my, our awesome kids. Revival is for me. The privilege, the joy of laying down every night knowing that you know, that you know, that you know that Jesus is Lord. It cranks my tractor. You, I've been there. I used to be a bouncer in bars. I used to enjoy fighting. I enjoyed fighting. How stupid can you get? I was stuck on stupid. But when I dropped to my knees, because real men will drop to their knees, they'll say, Jesus, be the true joy of my life. Be my everlasting joy of my life. So my true identity as I'm trying to bring it home this morning to you is to have that genuine, genuine, true identity. How you do that? We said this last night. Image, the first letter, it's got to mean something to you, who you are. Desire. We talked about desire. Lord, we show our trust in you by obeying. Everybody say, I am. I am. And I will, I will. Obey. obey. So developing this true identity is we've got to understand our image is everything. It will always speak louder than anything we say verbally, guys. You can talk all day long, but it won't talk like your walk, like your image. It won't do it. That's why it's so important. And we got to have the desire because we understand the devil will never give us a good enough day to have a day off. He's not going to do that. He's going to hit you and hit you and hit you and hit you. You don't even get outside that door and he's hitting you. How many of you will admit that right now? You see, but let me ask you the question. If you know the answer to the problem, do you have a problem? The answer is Jesus. The answer is a genuine, true identity in him. The next letter is E. I got to have endurance. I got to maintain. How do I have endurance? I stay faithful to church. I stay faithful with the right fellowship. If you're going to go over here with your homeboys that nothing about them, their conversation, their makeup, or nothing, nothing represents him, you're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong position. You'll never hear from God if you choose to keep yourself in position that is opposite God. It will not happen for you. 
And the next letter as we get through this now is the letter N. His name is Jesus. A good reputation is more valuable than costly perfume, the scripture says. And the next word, and that name is Jesus. And the next letter is thankful. I'm so thankful that Jesus kept me from dying out there in the world. That I understand now it was not God that put me here. We're developing true identity here. I understand my image now, who I am to represent, how I should say, how I should live, how I should love, how I put my faith in him and I keep myself pure. I get it now. I have that desire. I will not quit. I will not quit. Why God called me to prison ministry? Because he knew I wouldn't quit. I will endure. I will. It's in the name of Jesus. Everywhere I go, I will clearly proclaim the name of Jesus. I never mention my denomination. I never mention a religion because neither will get you to heaven. It's in the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm so thankful that I can say all that and know that it's true. I'm thankful now I realize God didn't put me here and the devil didn't want me to come here either. John 10, 10, the devil came to steal, kill, and to destroy, but God came to give life and life. Abundantly. Say abundantly. abundantly. Say it with an attitude. Abundantly. I'm thankful for that. But God says, no, devil, you're not going to kill him out there in the world and go to hell. I'm going to allow him to come to prison. Set in these green chairs. Hear God's word. Make a difference for their life and for their family. Save a soul. Save a family. In Jesus' name. You just heard. You just heard that. Very saying right there with Gary, because he got it right, it got his family right. And God says he's no respecter of person, place, or thing. So you got to understand he can't wait to do it for you. He's just waiting for you to grab a hold of your true identity and trust him with all that you have in the name of Jesus. I'm thankful in Psalms 103, the Bible says, let all that I am praise the Lord. My true identity praises the Lord. Amen. Verse 3 says it, he forgives, I'm thankful, he forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. To God be the glory. I have been diabetic for a lot of years. I've had blood pressure. And here in the last number of months or whatever, God has healed me of those two diseases. Why? Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The last letter we'll get to. See, I realize God has never been a God or a day of miracles, but there's always been a God of miracles, and he's still in the healing business today we just have to believe for that in Jesus name I'm thankful he redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies I'm thankful he fills my life with good things my mouth is renewed like the eagles I'm thankful the Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly Anybody in here been treated unfairly? That's a stupid question. Colossians says this, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other. What? Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other. The only thing that will create harmony in this place is everybody on the same page in love with Jesus Christ. That's it. 
That's what the scripture said right, right here. So I'm thankful. The next letter is I, impossible. We're breaking down identity, I-D-E-N-T-I-T-Y. My image means something to me now. My desire is important. My endurance is important. It's about the name, the name of Jesus. I am thankful that I'm here this morning. I am so honored that I can be around great men. I'm so thankful that I can hear awesome anointed worship. I'm thankful to stand up here and watch all these men. And I'll be honest with you, y'all, Y'all know y'all signed everything, but I took a picture last night from back here at this crowd, and it was just hundreds of y'all just standing worshiping God, and it brought tears to my eyes, and I just said to myself, devil, check this picture out. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. See, I wore black today because we're burying the devil. I just wanted to be nice, respectful. How many of y'all ready to bury him? Let me see you, huh? How many of you ready to bury him? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing is impossible. I've said it many times. Hebrews 11:6. Every one of you, every one of you, you must memorize this verse of scripture. It's dirt simple. It is impossible to please him, God, without faith. That without faith, it's impossible to please him. So I get up today. How far can I walk, Daniel? Where are you, Daniel? Can I walk around here? Okay, if I squeak, be ready. So I wake up in the morning, and I'm walking. Don't matter where I'm walking in this prison. It don't matter that today... Without faith, it's impossible for me to please him. And so, Lord, today I have faith. I have faith. I'm a man of God. I have faith. I have faith that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I have faith today as I walk this prison. I have faith. I'm a man of God. I know my image I know how I'm supposed to look. I know how I'm supposed to talk. I know how I'm supposed to live. Hi, how you doing today, sir? God bless you. How you doing today? God bless you. How you doing today? Get up, brother. Give me a hug here. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you. I know how to live my life. I know how to have faith in God. I know how to love people. Okay? This is how I get up today, and I'm very thankful, thankful, thankful. This is my day. Now let me ask you a question. When you're walking up and down these hallways and you're talking to yourself, and they may give you some medicine for that. I don't know. (laughs) But you got to encourage yourself. That's exactly what I did as a kid. One day I'm going to play pro football. One day I'm going to play pro football. All my teammates would say, Barber, get out of here. From Waddle, Texas, I know you're a good athlete. It ain't going to happen. You see, you got to grab a hold of a can-do atmosphere. Oh, this is good. you got to grab a hold of a can-do atmosphere in the midst of a can't-do atmosphere. you got to grab a hold of a can-do attitude in the midst of a can't-do atmosphere. How important is attitude? The first letter's A. The T's are number 20. U is 21, I is number 9, D and E is 4 and 5. Put those numbers together, it equals exactly 100. Attitude is 100% of how you change atmosphere. Atmosphere does not change me, I change it. How do I do that? I know my image. I'm working on my true identity. I know my image. Aren't y'all glad I don't have my boots on today? (laughs) I know my image. I have the desire to finish. I have endurance. I know the name. His name is Jesus. I got you good then, huh? 
stick your other knee out so I can get where you're balanced, okay? That way you won't, you won't know how to limp, huh? I know his name. His name is Jesus. I'm almost done, guys. I've got eight minutes. I know his name. It's my job to create, to cultivate my true identity. It's nobody else's job. It's my job. And when I create this true identity, it don't matter where I am, God is my source. And I don't lose sight of that. You need a miracle? Start speaking it. When you're getting out of prison now, any day now. When you're getting out of prison now. When you're getting out. When you're getting out. True identity. When you're getting out. I tell you, what's the difference with that than when Noah walked the earth? He didn't have any support, not one. Every second of his life, he was mocked, ridiculed, made fun of. That man is insane. When you're getting out any day now, and these guys want to, I know how much of a sentence you've got. Why in the heck would you say something that stupid? And you're telling yourself, I can't help it. It's my true identity. I know my image, who I'm to represent. I have the desire, the endurance. It's all in the name of Jesus. I'm so thankful. Nothing is impossible with God. And then the last two letters, the next one is T, trust. Amen? Getting anything out of this? Amen. I hope so. Let's bring it home. Psalms 37, 3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. When you getting out now? So that means I got to trust in the Lord and do good. Doing good means representing him by what I say, how I live, my love for others, my faith in him, not the world, and I keep myself pure and holy in Jesus' name. So my trust is in the Lord, not methods but in the miracle work in God, and I will do good by dwelling in the land. That means you must stay in right position, and the right position, you should be faithful to church. You should be faithful in anything around you that helps you build as a man of God. That's what it means when it says dwell in. In the land. I'm being as honest with you as I can, guys. This is the first time. I can't even remember the last time I've been in a prison on Sunday morning. I don't do it. Because Sunday is my day to go to church and be fed. I go and go and go and go. And I'm nothing but a vehicle. And I got a vehicle outside. And I always make sure I keep an eye on that needle. That needle has a big voice, and I trust that needle. And when that needle gets close to E, I don't care how busy I am, I stop and fill up. See, God, that's exactly the way you should feel about your life. When you feel you're getting close to empty, I'm going to get my butt in church. I'm going to get my butt in a Bible study. I'm going to find out chaplain's agenda during the week, and there's a guarantee there's going to be a program or two that I can sink my teeth into because I'm going to trust him. I'm going to dwell in the land. Let's bring it home now. I've said it already many times before. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ. Nobody else, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, God. 
Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. No other name can say that. They can pretend in other names. But he is a resurrected Savior. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. To God be all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name. Now, quietly and most respectfully as we can, pray to yourself. You don't have to bow your heads. You can keep your head up. That's cool. You be you. Make it count. Make it count. Burn it into your art. My image means something to me. My desire for him means something to me. My endurance for him means something to me. His name, Jesus, means something to me. Everything to me. I'm so thankful that God did not allow the devil to take me out when I would have split hell wide open. I'm so thankful that it took coming to prison to become a real man, a man of God. I'm so thankful I realize now that with God, nothing is impossible with him. Today, I trust him, and I will do good, and I will dwell in his righteousness. And this man never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Jesus' name, if you truly prayed that, he is the Lord of my life. For about 15 seconds, I want you to stand to your feet right now. Very quietly, very quietly. The reason we do this is because the Bible is very clear. He says, if you'll confess me before men, I'll confess you before my heavenly Father. So we are fulfilling God's word as I speak. Feel it, guys? Ask God right now to, to burn your footprint in that tile as we speak. On this very special Sunday morning, what's the day's date? November the 18th, 2018. Everybody say it with me. November the 18th, 2018. 2018. Sunday morning. Sunday morning. When am I getting out? Oh, November the 18th, 2018. In Jesus' name, I prayed and I received. And I give all the glory to my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Please be seated. Happy birthday. What a great birthday. God bless you. Amen, guys. Guys, I can't thank you enough. It's hard to stop, but yet, to God be the glory, it's the way it's supposed to be. I can't say it enough. Can't say it enough what this week has meant to me, my, my wife, Scout. Uh, I don't have friends here. I have family. Here. Hey, let's do this thing together. I'll do my best not to let you down. You do your best not to let me down. 
And just so you know, if you do, I forgive you. And like Jesus, he says, I forgive and I forget. So when I forgive you, I'm going to forget about it. And I'll do my part to do everything I can to keep you going in the right way. You can help me keep going in the right way by praying for this ministry daily. I told you, I think, before, you can tell all your families every Tuesday at 12.30 p.m. at the noontime hour at 12.30, they can go on Facebook, Mike Barber Ministries, and they can catch me live. I talk for about 15 minutes. It's always just a quick, short message of motivation to coach you up. So if you got families, uh, I talk. I give a lot of testimonies on in there and talk about where we've been, where we're going, and stuff. It can kind of update them, but it'll, it'll it'll give them maybe a blessing. We've had quite a few already that's called in, that's changed their life. Uh, you know, one lady here not long ago called in, let us know that the son's in prison, and listen to him talk to me now. But listening to your broadcast and encouraging me. It's really made me realize that I, I need to stop fooling myself and get right as a woman, gave her life to Jesus Christ. And so, hey, there again, when you, all your families get on the same page, great things can take place. Amen? Amen and amen. Well, gentlemen, God bless you. I really don't know how we're going to do this. We, we're going we're gonna to baptize uh, a bunch of guys here. And th those of you before... Uh, when you get into the water, make sure you tell me if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan. <laughs> just saying. And I just tell you in advance, if you are, if you are, take a deep breath. And hold it. <laughs> just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Amen. Guys, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. And if you guys want to do a little music in the background as we're baptizing, what it, you can do that. It's just up to you. And so I'm kind of really lost. How, how are we doing it? Are all of you staying? Is that, is that what we're doing? We're all staying and we're going to do this? Okay. Well, that would be great because I can get you uh, involved. I'll show you how to do it in just a moment. But uh, in closing, one more time. Let's give God a great, big, huge thank you. Amen. Thank you for watching this awesome program. Remember, it was take delayed, and yet it's so special just to watch. I know you were touched, and we're touched, because the only way this can happen is through our awesome partners that understand where we go. Our congregation, the inmates, can't respond financially but our partners, they do. They send us, even into the least of them. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. And we'll be back with you very soon, once again.